basketball and focus James Ribshack for a Thursday. We got Coach Kim Furlow with us. Coach, congratulations on a great season. Thank you. And tell us about it. You know, you go back to the beginning of the season. What did you see then and what did you see at the end that kind of made the difference in this team, you think? Um, well, obviously our youth, you know, starting three sophomores. Um, they all played a lot last year. But Cassie Rokevich, well, she was our two guard because we had Sydney Wilson, who was the player of the year, brought in the one. So moving Cassie to the one this year, you know, just took some adjustment. Um, but we just kept getting better and better as we went on. How did you decide it was going to be Cassie to take that spot? Um, she's naturally a point guard. She always has been. I mean, when she played with me on AAU when she was younger, she she is a point guard. And when she first hit the, her freshman year, we thought she was going to be the, uh, the dynamic scorer. But I know it's kind of a tough transition to go back. But if she had that, I guess, experience before, like you say, she was you know, yeah, kind of the choice you would have to go with. Then. Right. And last year, you know, she could score more from the two position. Mm -hmm. Sydney running the one. So, I'll um, tell you, Sydney Wilson, uh, I know you didn't have her this year. We'd love to have her this year. Well, yeah. great player and a hard yeah. nose player. Yes, she is. And I felt like this team became more like that as the season went on. Right. Cassie's tough, and you have to be tough to be a point guard. Got to be tough, got to be smart, got to be yes. all things, rolling yes. the one, right? Yes. Yeah. But she has the green light to, to shoot the ball. She's a good shooter. So she scores for us. I mean, she averages 10 a game. I mean, that's because uh, you kind of, some of your games are kind of low scoring games. Anyway, 10 points almost a fourth of what you may score in a game on a given night, <laughs> depending on the defense, right? Yeah, yeah. But defensively, we try to slow people down. You know, our scores are lower. Okay, games like you had against a team like Terry Sanford, that was a team you definitely would want to slow down. Yes. And you did. Yes, yes. That was that was the whole point. <laughs> That was a, that was kind of like one of those. That was a, was it a Wednesday day game or maybe a Tuesday. Anyway, that was like we call one of those hump games. That got you over the hump too, didn't it? It did. Um, I don't know. Maybe Chapel Hill even got us over the hump. That was big because they had had. I was reading a little bit of maybe off the website from Dan and Raleigh where they'd won maybe at home or what they're, they had a good record going. You went in and broke that record in half what yes. they had carried for so long. Yes. They had kind of the dynasty going down there. They did. And we have played them in the state playoffs three different times and lost all three times. So we were really excited to beat them. You knew how tough that East was going in, but do you kind of like being kind of fixed in that East division now pretty much? Um, you know, it, it's either one. I mean, we knew how tough the West was, but with us being in Greensboro and being right in the middle, we never know if we're going East or West. So from the East you've gone to the past couple years, you see a lot of the same people every year. We do. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Eastern Alamance quite a few times this year, right? <laughs> yeah. Had success. First two times they got you, but by the time it kept going and building, by the time you got to about that third game, that was about an 18 point win for you. Yeah. Well, the first time we played them, we didn't have Elisa, her name. She was out. It makes a difference. So that, that makes uh, you know a little bit of difference. Mm -hmm. um, the second time we played them was right after we were out of that snow for five days, so no practice. So mm -hmm. I just, we just weren't ready. Um, and so we felt the third time we played them, we were prepared. And then the fourth time you played them, it was for all the marbles. Right. That's a tough conference. I mean, I was kind of surprised, just me, that they were actually the one there instead of Rockingham County. I thought Rockingham County might be there. Well, you know, the final four in the East was us, Rockingham, exactly. Eastern Alabama. So, uh, yes, our conference is extremely tough. I mean, you've got we have nine teams in our conference, and you've got to come to play every night. You know, really, I mean, we had one team that didn't win a game. Um, but and it was still a competitive team for what the other coaches right, told me. Right, yeah. right. I mean, it was still, you had to play. You couldn't just, you know, not show up. And at one time I was telling Joe Sierra earlier that the fact was back in the day you were chasing Northern Guilford was chasing Eastern Alamance, kind of chasing in some ways Rockingham County, kind of chasing Burlington. Williams team you always kind of battled to do. But now it's like Burlington, Williams, Eastern Alamance, and Rockingham County, they're kind of chasing you guys now. It's kind of flipped a little bit. I would hope so. I would think so, yeah, from this point <laughs> yeah. on, I would think so, yeah. definitely. But still, it's always going to be a very tough conference. Yeah. yeah. Go back to your days at Southeast Guilford oh, when you first gosh. got started. Take us back there because that's where it all began, right? Yeah. Because I, I was down there a couple weeks back when I always got me, one of my 
visual image. And so I looked at that trophy case. I saw those basketballs. I saw one with your name on there for like a thousand point score. But they were like three or four, maybe. Oh, that's, that's a lot of points. You figure if you play three years, which back in some days you weren't playing a lot of varsity basketball in ninth grade, you played three years, you got to average about 20 points a game to get to a thousand points over a three year period. And you had some girls 1,400 points, 1,700 points. I mean, those are impressive. You look at those. Yeah. There's a lot in those basketballs. People look at it and see the numbers written on there and the names and some games. There's a lot more in that ball that meets the eye. Yeah, and I was a JV kid. I played JV my ninth grade year, mm -hmm. so I was only in varsity three years there. And you were playing with teams too, if I remember correctly. You had some fairly solid teams. Yes. Where so I mean, some girls will be on a team. They may be the top player. They're going to get their 20 a game because they have to. Right. In your case, you had other people score too. We did. Our, our senior year. I mean, we're talking years ago, but our senior year, um, all five starters went and played college hmm. at some level from D3, 2, and 1. Yeah. And who was coaching then? Jim Plonce. Coach Plonce was mm -hmm. the man back then? Yeah. Because you played for Coach Plonce, and then later you were his assistant coach too, right? Or were you? Uh, no. Didn't get to be. Mm -hmm. hmm. No. Uh, I coached with Sean Newton at I Southeast. So, I guess, let's look at the time frame. So you played at Southeast. And then left there and went to uh, maybe Appalachian? I uh, went to University of South Florida. South Florida. For two okay. years. Wow, I didn't know about that. Yeah. Okay, got you. And then uh, transferred to Appalachian. Okay. Set out a year and then played there for two years. Loved it. So Loved it. South Florida, then Appalachian. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. No UNCG involved there then? I was assistant coach at UNCG for five years. Five years assistant women's coach yeah. on the women's team. Yeah. That's a big experience. That was in your younger days. So that's a big yeah. experience back yeah. then. After I left App, I went overseas and played a year professionally okay. and then I came back and coached at UNCG for five years under Lynn Ag. Wow, that's an experience right there. I mean, yeah. people, I mean, gosh, from coaching standpoint, look at what you do in your career, to get a shot to do that, that's pretty big because Coach yeah. Ag runs a very serious program yeah. too. You're doing some serious basketball now. Yeah, there. she was, um, she was awesome to work for. I can imagine. I really, when I coach and I think about how I do things, I think about her and how she did them and, you know, try to be like her. So you came out of UNCG, what happened next? You hit the high school uh, level after coaching college assistant? Um, well, got married during that time okay. and we decided we want to have kids and right. that's a hard job to do, to be a college coach, and, you know, as oh, a female imagine. and have young kids. So um, left there and decided to go in the high school. So I went and coached a couple years at Randleman. Hmm. Um, okay. Just assistant coach while I was going back to school and my kids were young and then went to Southeast. <laughs> So hit from random in the southeast, but missed the coach Klontz era, and then you get to coach with him. It's pretty crazy. So by that time he was out and Coach Newton was in. Right. And then Coach Newton had to leave to go to Iraq, right? Right. And then you took over as head coach there right. then. How many yeah. years was that? A couple years? Just one. One year. Yeah. And then Northern opened and I was offered the job there. Did you know while you're at Southeast as the head coach that one year during that time frame you would become the Northern Guilford head coach? Um, well all the interviews and everything happened during that year. So um, they actually told me the end of January uh, during that year. How did you do that year at Southeast when you're the head coach for the girls? We did well. Pretty successful yeah. season. Yeah, we did. Did you have Haley Hackett or Whitney Clinton in those uh, teams? Whitney was gone, but okay. I had I did have Haley Hackett. Yeah, and Amy Beasley. Wow. Yeah, that was a good year. It's pretty interesting. I had Amy. So that's not. That seemed like I mean, time frame is a big thing in life. You think, you think of your middle. That's not too long ago when Amy was there. Right. But you've been I'm how not. long have you been at Northern now? Um, this is our ninth year as a school. It's amazing. I actually got to coach Amy, but been at Northern nine years. That's a good run. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So you get to Northern and start to build that program. And uh, when you first got there, was uh, were you already in the Samantha Co for years then, or did that come a little when bit later? When I first got there, we had to play varsity with freshmen and sophomores, and Samantha Cofer was a freshman. So she was with them from the beginning. Right? Yes. Wow. Because that's always been one of my things in my notes I keep about Coach Furler. The fact that you, when you had Samantha, she was a tall girl back in the basketball days with girls, and a girl was tall like her, or like uh, even Bailey Cargo. You say, okay, you're playing down low. You two girls are tall. You stand down here. But you put her at the guard spot and probably help. I guess, develop her college career while she was still in high school. We did. Um, you know, in high school, you don't have a lot of choices sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when we first started, we didn't have that many girls, honestly. So she played everything from one to five. She started out as a post player, and then um, we were at camp. 
one summer we didn't have a point guard and we had somebody trying to run it and kept turning it over. She just looked at me and said, I'll do it. Hmm. And so she did. And we knew, you know, that she was going to go play D1. And for her to have that experience playing the point guard was just, you know, so fortunate. There's a girl at Grimsy right now does some of that too, Rebecca Little. I've seen yeah. Rebecca not. Good, good, big, tall kid, plays out front, does a good yeah. job of that. So you had Samantha, then you got Amanda later too, got her sister who's done well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you get Aaliyah Greenwich who follows that same frame. Yeah. Then later you get Sydney Wilson and get uh, Casey Johnson. You've had a good foundation over the years. Right. Yeah, and they're, you know, I've been fortunate. They're all girls that want to work hard. I mean, Sounds they don't like necessarily, it. they don't come in like that, but they're willing to work and, you know, get in the weight room and do everything we need to do to get better. And they buy into that, and it pays off for them. If they want to go to college, I will help them get somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, a matter of where and what, how far they want to go. How many are still playing in college now? So got a few out there right now, I'm sure. Uh, Amanda, Kofor, uh, Sydney Wilson, Casey Johnson, Aaliyah Greenwich. Yeah, there's four right now. That's pretty good. Pretty, yeah. Who was the young lady that played for you and later on she went on to become, she played maybe D3 college basketball. Now she's like a college assistant coach. Um, that's Von Trees Hayes. Okay. That's Lacia Seaton's older sister. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's coaching up in Maryland. So that's awesome for her. She's done real well. For yeah. Her. Yeah, look at the situation this year. Those previous teams, and sometimes maybe looking back at what you had then, what you have now, you may have expected you could have gone further with some of those teams. You did this year's team. This turned out to be the team. But I guess a lot of it goes back, too, to the night on the side. And Lisa Kinane, that's just a big yeah. difference maker, huge well, difference maker. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's not just the height. She's so talented. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, you, anybody can have a 6'5", but if they're not any good, that doesn't help you. But she is, she's just so talented. And her basketball IQ is just tremendous. Um, she's such a team player. She she is just as happy passing the ball as she is shooting it. So I saw a couple of plays in the uh, state championship game. A lot of your big players, you look at a picture where they're going down from balls on the floor. I mean, she's going down to get oh, yeah. these loose balls. I mean, yeah. they are scrambling just a few feet off the floor. That says right. a lot too. Yeah, I mean, we have a rule: the balls on the floor, you need to get on the floor, and, and it applies to her as to everybody else. And she'll dive on the floor. It's, I, I don't have to make her do that. How crazy was it? You finished this season, I think you finished fourth in the Haco. Uh, yeah, we did. Yes. Fourth in the Haco, but yeah. second in the state. How uh, crazy is that, huh? I know. Yeah, I don't know what it is about the Haco. We just don't ever seem to perform. Were you still, still early well. in the season? Maybe still developing them, possibly? I, I don't know what it is. I'm just looking forward to the year we can go up there and really play well. Next year might be that year. You're taking the team for this yeah. season. You never know. It could well be. Uh, Lisa Kinane's injury, how did that set the team back early a little bit? Um, well, she missed four games, and then the Haco was her first game back. And it was actually like her second day back. So if she didn't have practice. She was out of shape, you know, understandably. She'd been out for quite a while. Um, but, you know, I mean, we had to develop other people, and we got some experience and some confidence to play without her. We won two and lost two without her. So. That's important, you know. She's not always on the floor. Right. She gets in foul trouble or something like that. This kid's a Maya Clayton. She came on big for you this year, she too. Did, we didn't know yeah. much about her at all before the season. Started seeing her name some. All of a sudden, yeah. she becomes a uh, part of the rotation and part of the big factor of what yeah. you did. Yeah. Zamaya, so, so we call her Z. Um, she played two years of JV, and she played varsity last year but didn't see many minutes. And then she just, she's one of those kids that always was in the gym and, you know, workouts and stuff. And it's just her senior year, just the light bulb went off. And she helped us. She was our spark for a lot of games, and that was fun to watch her develop. Got some good minutes out of Alicia Seaton this year too. Mm -hmm. We did. Yeah, Alicia had a lot of experience. She's a very physical player. Very physical, exactly. Yeah, and she could help us. You know, she could play one of every position. She's one of those kids that could play one through five. She's smart, and she can. She knows the offense inside and out. So she she was a huge factor as well. Did you stick with that nine girl rotation pretty much the entire year? You usually go with that smaller roster. Did you ever add to that later? Um, we we pulled up three JV kids for the state playoffs, and they were uh, they were awesome to have. They kind of adopted the scouting team role, and they would jump out there and run you know other teams' stuff for us, and they were fine with that. And you know they didn't see very many minutes, but they were they were great. What can you do to get better next year? Um, we've got to do you know we got to stay in the weight room. We got to continue to get stronger. Um, 
playing together. We'll do stuff some, all summer together. We just got to keep bonding and keep working on. We have some weaknesses that we've got to get better at. Got a strength and conditioning man out of Northern that works well on some of those things? Um, no, um, myself and Haley, Haley Hackett actually yeah, does Haley's most of the course. Strong girl, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she does a tremendous job with our strength training. When you think about uh, Haley, it's got a good background. I guess she was volleyball and basketball maybe back in the day. Played quite a bit. And she was a state champion in uh, shot. Really? Mm -hmm. That too. That says a lot. Yeah. So state champion in shot. She played the basketball. She played the volleyball. Did them all. Then. Yeah. What did she do in college? She went to Appalachian, didn't she? She played at Appalachian, yes. Mm -hmm. Playing basketball up there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Got her on the staff. Got Whitney Clinton. Is that right on the staff? Yes. Former Southeast player as well. She was yeah. a guard back in the day, right? Played she was, yeah. Good little hustling guard. Who's your other assistant coach? Um, her name's Nicole Bullier. She is a uh, teacher at Northern. When I first came to Northern, she uh, was my JV coach. And then she left and had three kids. And then when she came back, and I asked her, hey, are you interested in you know, coaching again? And so she's just been awesome this year. What was the difference in that Morganton Freedom game that kept you in that game? Because you were down early, got back in it, and battled, and the word over in the uh, Smith Center, I told someone earlier, the word was you were losing the game 55-50. But you actually made a three-point game, 53-50. That game was within your reach. How would you get back in that game, and what, what kept you in that game? Um, kind of what kept us in all the same Because they had one girl on that team. She had a real big girl in yeah, there. That was she, a big team. And the was. team they beat in the regional final, they beat them like 77-47. Yeah. I mean, man, you're they beat everybody by 30. Hmm. And so we were just, you know, we, we were just not intimidated. We, we just went in there. Unfortunately, I think the nerves got us the first a quarter. early, yeah. 20 to 7 the first quarter. And then after that, we outscored them for all three quarters. Hmm. We that, just dug that hole. But we just kept chipping away at it, you know, and we, this team, they don't, they just don't quit. So you probably take that box score from that game, you circle that first quarter and keep yeah. that for next year, too, yeah. probably. Keep probably so. Things. A lot of good mementos, though, from the season, right? Oh, yeah. That, that, our whole run through the state playoff was just almost magical. It was fun. Uh, the girls just bought into it. The excitement was there. Every game we won, we were truly excited and just not surprised, but excited. You know, a lot of ways in the past, your girls are the underdog dudes. They kind of had that, I remember mean, talking to Amanda Kofer when you're the, want to keep that chip on your shoulder, kind of keep you trying, working hard. You're the underdogs, so a lot this year. Next year, you won't be the underdogs anymore. They'll be a little bit I, different. Maybe role. not. I mean, we definitely were this year being the 12th seed. Sure. You know, so we were playing um, just the first game we played a lower seed. After that, it was a five seed, a four seed, a one seed, and then a one seed. So, yeah. Yeah, we were probably the underdogs, but that's okay. Because along the way, you, you beat the Chapel Hill team, you beat the Terry Sanford team, and who else along North, that way? Um, Central Nash. Central Nash. Tell me much about them. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gosh. Anybody yeah, who, you, who was in the regional final down there? It was us in Eastern Alabama. Eastern Alabama. So yeah, you played your conference team in the final, beat them pretty well. Yeah. Was that ever a close game? Pretty much handled them from the beginning. Um, it was not. They made a little comeback in the third quarter, and uh, you know we had called a timeout, had a little heart to heart, and after that it was we got back on track. Good to go. Yeah. Just got to say congratulations on the good year Thank and uh, excellent work. Those days at Southeast definitely paid off for you. <laughs> what was probably your record? Do you remember back your senior year, how your girls finished then? How far did you go your senior year? We made it to the regional semifinals or finals. I can't remember. Um, who else? Did any other major name players, the basketball fan from that area or that era may remember on that team with you? Um, Kathleen Tompkins played. That name, yeah. yeah. Lori Phillips and Ann Bird and Brenda Coley. Those were the five. Lori Phillips. Is that the same Lori? What was her uh, married name, probably? I don't know her married yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's not the same Lori. Went to our church back in the day. The Lori Allen, not her. I thought if I had that Lori Allen was tall. You remember her from the church back in the day, maybe? Tommy Allen, Lori Allen? Yes. Yeah, remember yes, her? Yes, I do know them. Very tall. But if, she, if, I, if we had you and her, I know we could have a good insight. But she was tall. If I see a tall player, like uh, Lisa, you know, you talked before about just because you're talking to a player. Right. When you see a tall player, you say, I want to go to work on that. It's like cutting out a tree. I want to go work on that player, make her a girl player. But Coach Plant again led the way back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wore his orange sport coat. <laughs> 
I remember they had the night when they brought back the, another lady from your school back in the day. She might have been, you might have been a number two player all the time. She might have been a number one player all the time. Remember her name? Yeah, it was Lori. Yeah, she played Lori. varsity four years. So you played yeah. together. Mm -hmm. So probably the top two players in to some degree of school history probably on the same team. Yeah, they were. How many wins again that senior year? I don't know. Probably about <laughs> close to 30, I would think. Probably. Uh, yeah, we were pretty good. Wow. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Interesting stuff because it shows you where you came from and where you are today yeah. and where you should be next year. Yeah. Can you get that Northwest Guilford run going next year? They had the unbeaten streak and losing the final game. And uh, yeah. I mean, next year, uh, anything less than making it to the state finals, that's going to be a little bit of a disappointment, I would think. you got to get back there again. You know, I mean, people don't understand how hard it is to well, get yeah. there. Yeah. And, you know, you've got to be talented, but everything's got to fall in place. You can't have injuries, illnesses. you got to have a little bit of luck. I mean, you, a lot of things have to happen for that to, to you know, to get back there. So we're, we're going to try. We'll definitely try. But it's not an automatic. But you sure are looking forward to the challenge, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. If it would start tomorrow, it wouldn't be too soon for you to be ready to get it, I'm sure. <laughs> I'd like to have another week off or so. <laughs> not bad. At least the rest of this week, right? Yeah, yeah. Coach, great job.